ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जयत मुदीर नष्ट भद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिरभवती नैष्टिके कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाय गोविंदय नमो नम ओम अज्ञानतिमरांध से ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मील जेन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम मुखम कौती वाचाल पंगु लंगयते गिरी यत्तमह वंदे श्रीगुर दीनतारिण परमाधव निनंदमह नौमी सर्वानंदक परम हरिनामादम देव अवदूता शिरोमणि आनंदलीलामय विग्रहाय हेमा दिव्य छवि सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रसा प्रदाय चैतन्यचंद्राय नमो नमस्ते नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नितनाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सदि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो लेट एस गो टू द असेंबली वेर प्रहलाद महाराज इज स्पीकिंग द ग्लोरीज ऑफ लॉर्ड हरि टू हिज फ्रेंड्स द डीमन फ्रेंड्स जन्माद्याषि मे भाव दृष्टा देहस्यनात्म फलाव वृक्ष कालनेश्वरमूर्ति प्रहलाद महाराज इज सेंग जस्ट एज फ्रूट्स एंड फ्लावर्स ऑफ ए ट्री इन ड्यू कोर्स ऑफ टाइम अंडर गो सिक्स चेंजेस बर्थ एक्जिस्टेंस ग्रोथ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ड्विंडलिंग एंड देन डेथ the material <coughs> which is obtained the material body which is obtained by spirit soul under different circumstances undergo similar changes hmm. however there is no such changes for the spirit soul can you all sit like this so that because you are looking in a such awkward position it becomes difficult and come here make your seats like this so here a very crystal clear example is given to us how to identify uh, the differences between the body and the soul <coughs> this is very important verse in understanding this difference hmm. there is also a verse in the bhagavad gita which says na jayate mriyate va kadachin nyayam bhutva bhavita va na bhuya ajo nityam shashvatoyam purano na hanyate hanne mane sharire hmm. it says that the for the soul there is never a birth or not death not nor having once been does <coughs> he ever cease to be he is unborn he is eternal he is ever existing underlying and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain <coughs> see here an example of a tree has been given if you see a tree 
tree when it gets fruits so there are in with those fruits and those with the with those flowers there are the six changes what are the six changes for this uh, flowers and fruits it takes birth it exists is growth there is transformation there is dwindling and then it is gone similarly <coughs> prahlad maharaj is comparing that to a soul the tree is like a soul and he takes a body which which also takes birth exist it grows it transforms it dwindles and then he dies like this we we get to uh we get so many bodies because of because of this conditioning nature so this is very clear and crystal clear analysis that uh we can easily understand this so shila prabhu writes in the purport <clears throat> that the birth of the human being's material body takes place due to the mixture of vomum and semen but the history of the birth says that not that all the time there is a, there is sexual intercourse and there is a mixture of vomum and semen there is a pregnancy it's not always possible hmm? because unless and until the soul enters that soul enters via the semen hmm, then only there is the body is formed and then uh, there, there is birth then it exists then grows and transforms and everything happens but unless <coughs> there is no presence of the soul hmm, then then it not, it's not going to happen so scientists might claim the science scientists they claim that how uh, a body is formed but uh, our spiritual scientists hmm, our acharyas they say that they they are presenting this fact hmm, how without when the soul is absent then although they the father and mother they try their the the uh, the, uh, the parents they try their best to beget a child but it's not possible for them unless it is sanctioned by the supreme lord so and the, when the soul enters hmm, why the why, why the why the uh, father's father semen then only there is a chance of uh, pregnancy <coughs> so this is how we understand that the soul is eternal and ever existing but the body is keep the body is they the soul accepts it keeps on changing hmm. so prahlad maharaj is trying to <coughs> help them help this boys understand hmm, that you should come out from the bodily platform hmm. so by this verse he is trying to explain them that we are not body we are souls hmm. this is the basic basic understanding which we also got while coming when we joined krishna consciousness hmm? and this is what understanding we also give to others because first we have to understand that <laughs> we are not this body but we are a spirit soul and then we 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 can proceed how to establish the relation with super soul hmm? now in the next verse prahlad maharaj is saying that atma means soul also and atma means super soul also hmm? so soul and super soul <coughs> <clears throat> that is the supreme lord and the living entities now both are uh, both are spiritual hmm? both are free from birth and death soul they are talking about a soul and they are talking about krishna the soul doesn't have death hmm? the body has a death or body has a birth the body goes dwindles it transforms it's, it's it has so many things but not the soul so now prahlad maharaj is explaining the nature of the soul he is saying that they are individual they are nodes of the external body they are the foundation or shelter of everything they are free from material change and they are self illumined uh, illuminated they are cause of all the causes prahlad maharaj is saying that the, even the soul is the cause of all the causes hmm? how we will find out and the super soul all is obvious that is the cause of all the all the causes <clears throat> with this transcendent qualities one who is actually learned hmm? when one understands this with realization hmm, then he will be free from the illusory concept of i and mine hmm. <clears throat> now we have to understand the nature of the soul hmm. in the bhagavad gita it is said that mamai vansho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana he said that this soul is my part and parcel so qualitatively we, we and krishna are same but not quantitatively quantitatively like there are two examples given hmm? the first example given is if there is a mountain of gold and then there is a piece of gold 
So quality wise, they both are same. But quantity wise, we have to know that this is greatest and this we are small. Similarly, there is one more example is often given is about uh, the sea, the sea, the drop of sea water. Hmm. This a drop of sea water is qualitative wise. We are, this is the same, but quantity wise, it's different. Hmm. So similarly, <coughs> but this Mayavadis, they are little, they are little unusual. Hmm. Hmm. They think that this this drop, they think that the large mountain of gold and this small hmm, piece of gold is the same. Hmm. Quantity wise also it is the same. How it is quantity wise the same? Hmm. So once one person was arguing, hmm, so one of the acharyas replied that so when it is cold, you hmm, then why you take the whole of blanket? Just take out a thread from that blanket and put it and try to see if if you can get rid of the cold. Hmm. Hmm. It will not be, then you will realize hmm, the, what is the difference between the Supreme Lord and with us. Hmm. <coughs> so this this funny example this Acharya gave. <coughs> so uh, the Supreme Lord is the greatest and we are the smallest. <coughs> Now, there are some foolish people who claim themselves as God. Hmm? They think that, okay, we are God. <clears throat> even, in the, in, even during the past times of Lord Shri Krishna, we saw that there was somebody called as Vasudeva Pondraka. Hmm? He, by his mystic powers, he, also, he had also Chaturbhuja Roop, Shanka Chakra Gada Padma. And he sent a letter to Lord Krishna hmm? that I am the original Vasudeva, so you give up your Sudarshan Chakra. Hmm? He sent a letter to Asuda and Lord laughed. He was laughing. And then there was a fight and the actual hmm, uh, original Lord was, was there, left and Vasudev Pundra got defeated. Hmm? So like this in our society also, hmm? society means in general, in <laughs> there are so many people who claim themselves as God. Hmm? But when they have pain in their tooth, they run to the doctor. Hmm? When they they have the doctors with them, hmm? they the, then they have their blood pressure increases, then they have diabetes, hmm? and but still they they call themselves as God. Hmm? <clears throat> Only if one is fortunate enough to understand this relationship with God, knowing that the God is great, Vibhu, hmm? whereas we living entity are small. So only fortunate people can understand this. This is a big science. By the, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and by the devotee's mercy, we are able to easily understand this. But this, to come into this understanding for outsiders, it takes so many, so many years. Sometimes birth after birth, they don't understand this. Because they are in this false idea that I am God. Hmm? And they give so many arguments to claim that they are God. Hmm? <clears throat> so this, that is illusion. Hmm? But when one comes to proper understanding by the mercy of the Lord, Vasudevam Sarvamiti Samatma Sudurlava. It is said one who knows Vasudev, such Mahatmas are very rare. Hmm? Such so devotees who surrender to the Lord Krishna with this understanding are very, very rare. Hmm? Now then Prahlad Maharaj gives a further more explanation. Hmm? He says that <coughs> an expert geologist he understands that which is stone and which is gold. Hmm? Hmm? A only expert person can understand. So similarly, a spiritually advanced person can understand how sp spiritual particle, which is soul, exists in the body. Hmm? Not everybody can understand this. Hmm? So when one who is not expert uh, in geological science and one who is not been trained to identify what is gold and what is stone, hmm? Then for them, because gold also it, it, it has to be hmm, uh, polished nicely and then we can come, but externally it seems both the same. Hmm. So similarly, <coughs> unless and until somebody is trained, if that geologist, then, hmm, then he can able to discriminate between what is gold and what is stone. Otherwise, for him everything is the same. For us, everything is the same. If you if you if you ask to go to a mine of gold, for us everything is charcoal. Hmm? 
it will make no difference to us. But if a geologist goes there and tries to identify, then he will find out, oh, this is gold. Hmm? Similarly, <clears throat> when uh, unless a person is trained by the spiritual master, hmm, a proper training is required. Without proper training, it is very difficult to hmm, identify the existence of the body, uh, soul in the body. Hmm. That's why people, people outside they fail. But the devotees, they get proper training from their senior devotees and understand by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and various means how the, there is the existence of the soul in the body. <coughs> then, uh, <coughs> foolish rascals, they <coughs> it is very difficult for them to come to this understanding. But devotees, they by the process of bhakti yoga, by following this principle of Bhagavad Dharma, they immediately come to this conclusion. <coughs> What is the conclusion? Dehinno sminyata dehe kaumaram yonam jara tatha dehantara prapti dhira satrana muyati. Only devotees can understand this. <coughs> and then Prahlad Maharaj, after uh, helping them understand this science, he is again he's taking them into little much detail. He is saying, Ashto prakrutaya proktas. He is saying, the Lord's eight separated material energies. Hmm? Then he is saying, Traya evahi tadguna, the three modes of material nature. Hmm? Vikara Shoda Charsharye He is saying the 16 transformation Puma Neka Samanvaya With all this the one spirit soul exists And he is like an observer hmm? So <clears throat> we, we shall know then what are the 8 different kinds of material energies hmm? Of the Supreme Lord now all these things put together, material energies, eight material energies, the three gunas and uh, <clears throat> the five knowledge gathering senses, the five working senses, then their control of the mind, they all, hmm, they all actually, the living entities get the opportunity to perform different kinds of karma with the help of this three modes of material nature. Everything is under the prakruti, hmm, but we think that it is, it is because of we are doing actually, but actually it is happening by the prakrutis that we are we get an opportunity uh, to perform certain karma by because of our parabdha. <coughs> so this this is the understanding of Prahlad Maharaj explaining that a soul is 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 there hmm? in in this amongst all this there is a soul the existence of soul is soul is there and we have to carefully hmm, analyze understand this <coughs> and there are two kinds of bodies one get. One is the individual body, hmm? individual, uh, sorry, one is the gross body and one is the subtle body. So the gross body is made of earth, water, fire, air and ether. Hmm? And the subtle body is made of mind, intelligence, mind, intelligence and false ego. And within this body is however the spirit, there is a spirit soul. So one must, uh, so one must find this soul by analysis, saying, so there is a way, naiti naiti, hmm? naiti naiti. Hmm? How do we, we, there, <coughs> there is there is there is a process of uh, identifying? Uh, like Mataji was giving a point yesterday. How should we try to hmm? remember Krishna always throughout a day? Hmm? Similarly, we have to also understand that what are the things by which we can come out from this bodily concept of life. Hmm? The first thing is the process we see initiation hmm? when the spiritual master initiates a disciple what does he do he changes the name hmm? initially which we, we used to identify ourselves with the name whatever we have got initially abc whatever was name was that hmm? and we, we are so proud of it that so many years we, we used to in the school in the colleges when we got married and everything we used to identify ourselves by that name we used to think that we are that that we are we are the same we are that body we are that hmm? but then when we get initiation our spiritual master changes our name and he makes into das or dasi hmm? so it is for so that this, that particular particular person starts identifying himself as a servant of the lord hmm? or a servant of of the shakti of the lord dasi hmm? 
so that one comes out from this one comes out from the bodily concept of life for example hmm, let me take uh, uh, someone whose whose name was akshay hmm? let's say akshay hmm? so he identifies himself as akshay 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 throughout his life hmm? then he becomes arvind netra das then he starts identifying himself as arvind netra das who is arvind netra is krishna hmm? so and is das and then people call him arvind netra prabhu ha are you arvind netra hmm? and then what is your name prabhu ji arvind netra das oh okay so whole concept changes hmm? immediately with all our activities we start identifying ourselves as a servant of the lord hmm? so this there are so many ways gradually how one can help us hmm? help uh, help one understand the existence of <coughs> the soul in the body hmm? <coughs> now the best way hmm, of attaining self realization is what is the best way of attaining self realization hmm? now suppose <clears throat> if you are in dark room in the dark room there is there is no light so can we see each other can we see can we see ourselves also hmm? no it's in a complete dark room there is no light so we can't even see each other. we see ourselves see our own body hmm? but when there is light we can see the light and then we can also see the ourselves similarly <clears throat> prahlad maharaj is saying that when one tries to understand the supreme personality of godhead hmm, krishna hmm, who whose janma karma whose is is transcendental then we can we can not only understand krishna we will realize krishna but also will be we ourselves will be self realized hmm. so when we try to understand about krishna Hmm? the supreme lord his activities his past times then we will also understand ourselves what that we are we are a tiny minute particle when we understand the creation when we hear creation from shrimad bhagavatam how lord lord mahavishnu karan daksha vishnu hmm? when he breathes hmm? that time innumerable universes come out from his body hmm? and in that innumerable universes he expands himself as garbha daksha vishnu and then from him comes brahma ji from brahma ji he creates the whole universe and then the krishna impregnates that with so many jivas so <clears throat> then we understand what is our tiny identity what are we very very small minute but because there are in the whole of the earth there is there are so many so many jivas and then we are here in manchester Hmm? tiny particle but we think that we are the lord of this whole world hmm? we think that we are boss of our house hmm? we think that we are we are maintaining them hmm? we are we have created our sons he took birth from me hmm? we are maintaining them hmm? so this is ahankara comes but when we understand about the glories of the lord how lord creates how lord maintains then we understand ki what is our position hmm? <coughs> So that's why, <clears throat> unless one understands Krishna and becomes Krishna conscious, hmm, one's material bondage will continue. <clears throat> to end this, to end this condition, life, one must surrender to the supreme personality of Godhead, and the supreme Lord He demands this. What is supreme Lord demanding? Sarva dharman paritajya maame kam shranam raja aham tuva am sarva paape bhimoksha shami masucha. Hmm, Krishna is saying this. <clears throat> So then, Prahlad Maharaj, after helping these kids understand, I know this is a te technical subject matter, hmm? no, no kathas and all, but but we should try our best to pay attention to this. Hmm? There is one verse, na Siddhanta Suniye Sadrud Na Kara Alas. You know that, Prabhuji? That verse. Hmm? That one shall not be lazy to understand. this technical subject matter because that will increase our faith in the lord hmm? this will help us develop unflinching faith in the supreme lord that's why we should try to hear and understand carefully what is prahlad maharaj trying to speak because imagine prahlad maharaj is trying to speak this science to kids of the same age hmm? and they got convinced and they understood hmm? 
and here we should, we should also try to pay a little attention to this and hear it carefully hmm? then <coughs> then Prahlad Maharaj uh, <coughs> then his friends are asking Prahlad Maharaj oh Prahlad hmm? so what is the best way to surrender to the lotus feet of the Lord what should one do hmm? and uh, how is it possible that all this uh, desires hmm, for material enjoyment hmm, for uh, how will that go away hmm. then Prahlad is saying that simply follow the process which Lord is asking us to follow then what is Lord asking us to follow the Lord is saying that that, per, that process is the performance of duties by which love for the supreme person that you have got it develops we have to do all our activities hmm, which will help us develop our love for God hmm. So, <clears throat> there are six, which is that duty one has to do? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Svaranam. Hmm? <clears throat> and there are six symptoms of surrenderness. Hmm? Six symptoms of surrenderness. First is to do everything favorable to Krishna. Hmm? Everything favorable. When we know that Krishna will be pleased by this, hmm? Shadus will be pleased by this, devotees will be pleased by this, then we should try to do that activities. Hmm? And the second is to avoid everything unfavorable to Krishna consciousness. Now what are unfavorable things? Hmm? Like going in bad association. When we know that there is that people are going to pubs, parties and all. So they might be Indians, they might or they might be Americans or anywhere, but they might be inviting us. Come, come, please join. One day what is going to happen? Throughout your life you spend there but one day what is going to happen? Come, 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 come. Hmm? And then so we should know that this is an unfavorable association. This is, this is not favorable. Hmm? Because what might happen, we might go for a day but then we will change the party. <laughs> hmm? Because it is the saying, hmm? Jaisi Sangat Vaisi Rangat. Hmm. See, if you start liking that association, then you might like to go again and again. And then one, twice, thrice, hmm. this way you will association will increase. And then you will ask, where are the other parties? Why are parties not happening? Hmm. So in this way, we will lose interest in Krishna consciousness. And because we desire this, then Krishna will arrange for it. Hmm. Krishna will arrange. If you want it, you will get it. Hmm. So we have to be very careful while practicing Krishna Man, what are we desiring? <laughs> so to avoid everything which is unfavorable to Krishna consciousness, everything. If we know that this is going to disturb our Krishna conscious life, better to not go on that path. Better to not go in that direction. Better to not go in that association. Better to not eat that food. When we know that even the vegan food which is available here, it is going to dis we eat outside, but it's going to disturb our consciousness. Why eat? Hmm? Why eat? Hmm? Because <coughs> we eat outside, but then our consciousness is polluted for two, three days, and we can't focus on, on chanting, we can't focus. So many mundane thoughts we get, mundane thoughts come in our mind. Then to have third is to have faith that only Krishna is our maintainer. This is a big thing, very important thing. Hmm? Krishna is our maintainer, Krishna is our, Krishna is our everything. They, here, <coughs> this, uh, all this thing, the six symptoms of surrenderness can be easily developed when one has deities in the house. Hmm? These days I see that there are so many deities in, in the house of devotees. But it is always good to have one deity. Hmm? There should be only one Ishtadev. Huh? So, then one can uh, try to develop that relationship with his own deities. We should depend on our deities that uh, my Krishna has appeared in the form of the deities and he is a part of my family, he is a family member. Hmm? So just like Krishna, <coughs> he was with the Pandavas. Hmm? Even though Krishna was supposed to be, he was supposed to stay in Dwarka with his 16,100 wives, but he never stayed there. Always used to go and stay with pa Pandavas, especially the Arjuna. He's always spending time in, with, with Arjuna. 
And when Krishna was spending his time in Hastinapur and with Pandavas, all the sadhus used to come every day to, to see Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. Hmm? So, <clears throat> we should... Uh, and Pandavas, we see from the life of Pandavas, how they used to see only Krishna as their maintainer. Hmm? Once, there is a <clears throat> once there was an incident when uh, Durvasa Rishi with his so many thousands of disciples, he went to Duryodhana's place hmm? and Duryodhana fed him so nicely, very very nicely and he was very pleased and at that time Pandavas were in exile. In the forest. <coughs> so, being very pleased with Druna, Duryodhan, Durvasarishi asked, Beta, what do you want? My dear son, what do you want? He said, I only want one thing, that you should go and take some service from my brother Pandavas also. Because they should also get benefit of your association. Because I have got, so although we have fight, but we actually we are for this is something different, you know, your association, your mercy, I also want a day should also go. So then what time should I go Duryodhan? Oh, best is to go after uh, 4 o'clock, you know, because they can, they can feed you, take your evening snacks there. Hmm? So Durvasa Rishi is not alone, hmm? he is going with thousands and thousands of hmm, his disciples. So somehow he went there. And Yudhishthir Maharaj and everybody found out, oh my god, this Dur Durvasarashi is here. How to cook for all of them? Duryodhana had all the facilities to cook for them, but here Pandavas and Draupadi they are staying all alone. How to cook for this uh, Durvasarashi? And uh, Draupadi had a Akshay Patra, the pot. Hmm? And when everybody ate, especially Bhima, when everybody had sumptuously ate, then then the Draupadi used to eat the last bite and then for that particular day that Akshay Patra used to close down, hmm? he used to take rest, no more food used to come out from them. And then this Durvas Rishi appeared and everybody looked at Draupadi and Draupadi said, no way, we are done for the day, kitchen is closed. Hmm? Then they all started looking at each other, now who is going to take care of Durvas Rishi? So then uh, you, then, then said, okay, let's welcome him first. And they, all the Pandavas, they welcomed uh, Durvasa Rishi and they said, uh, uh, we, and Durvasa Rishi said, please prepare for our uh, prasadam. Hmm? And till that time, we'll take bath and come back. We'll do our sandhya and come back. <coughs> so they went and here, everybody, all these Pandavas were in a big chaos. What is going to happen? This Durvasa Rishi is not an ordinary Rishi. He gets very easily pleased and he curses very easily also. Hmm? So now everybody started saying, get ready for the curse, hmm? Hmm? get ready for the curse and they said saying, already we are cursed, we are already in forest, what more curse Baba? Hmm? And all were discussing with Draupadi and Draupadi said there is only one way. Hmm? She folded her hands and she remembered Krishna, oh Krishna, please, please protect us, please protect us. And as soon as Draupadi was just simply praying that, in the praying in this way, she could, they all could hear Krishna's chariot coming. Hmm? Krishna's chariot came there and uh, Krishna came all of a sudden in their hut and Krishna said, Are, I am very very hungry. And they all, all of them started saying, Whoa, one more disciple of Durvasa. Huh? <laughs> and Krishna said, No, I am hungry. Feed me Draupadi something. And the whole problem is because of this food. And you are also asking food. Hmm? So then, Draupadi, then he said to Robadi, go and see that Akshay Patra, there will be something left for me and I will be satisfied by that. So he goes there <coughs> and she goes there, she brings the Akshay Patra and Krishna, he puts his finger there and he takes her one bite and he eats it. And as soon as Krishna eats it, then the whole hmm, of the universe, all the jivas in that universe, they are satisfied. Hmm? And as then Durvasa and other rishis, when they came out from the water, they all were, they were all their, their tummies were full completely, and no space was there. And then started talking to themselves, "Oh my God, is your tummy full?" He said, "Yes. How come? I don't know. Your is tummy full? Yes, I am full. And now Yudhishthira Maharaj, I might have performed so much food. 
Now who is going to eat that? And Durvasarashiv said to himself, Oh Krishna, again a Vaishnava Aparad. He is already he was terrified by an Amrish Maharaj incident. And he said that, not again. Hmm? I don't want to get with this, uh, commit any offences to the Vaishnavas. And especially Yudhishthir Maharaj. Once I committed offence to Amri, Ma, Amrish Maharaj, I had to run throughout the universe. Now I don't know where will I have to go. Hmm? This because Krishna is himself on the planet. It's very difficult. Let's go. So where, is, where should we go? Use all your potencies. Those who have, those who can disappear in water, they can disappear in water. Those who can merge in the wind, they merge in the wind. Those who can merge in the uh, earth, they merge in the earth. But just disappear from here. Get rid of this situation. Hmm? And Krishna here was telling Bhima, Bhima, go and call this Durvasarishi. I said, are you okay Mr. Krishna? Hmm? How, what are we going to serve them? Just go and see. Hmm? Go and see. So Bhima goes and he inquires from the people. So where is this? Durvasarishi. Uh, then somebody told that something went wrong and they just dis- they just disappeared. Huh? All of a sudden, all these thousands of rishis disappeared. So this is how the Pandavas used to have unflinching faith in Krishna that even the biggest of the calamities, Krishna is going to maintain us. Hmm? Hmm? He's going to protect us. Then when the second is to believe that to believe that Krishna is our protector. The Pandavas believe that Krishna is our protector. So Krishna, when we believe Krishna is our protector, then Krishna will maintain us. Hmm? He will maintain us. Hmm? But that, that, belief, that belief, that faith should be there. And that will come when we hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? That will come when we uh, hear again and again of Bhagavatam, we read Bhagavatam hmm? and speak about it. So this will help increase our faith in Krishna. Hmm? Then, then to realize that nothing <coughs> takes place except by Krishna's sanction. Hmm? We should know that <coughs> everything happens by the sanction of the Lord. Hmm? Not a leaf moves without Krishna's sanction. Hmm? So devotee has this faith. Hmm? This is surrenderness. A devotee should, must have this faith. And, to, and then to feel oneself very fallen. Normally what happens even among um, uh, we are practicing Krishna consciousness but we don't have this habit or attitude of humility. Hmm? So we should always depend on Krishna. Hmm? Or we, if we have our deities like Gornita is there in our house or Krishna Balram is there, we should always depend on our deities that they are doing everything. They are maintaining the family, not me. Hmm? What will I do? I cannot do anything. So we should always depend on our, our the Lord. The Lord is the in charge of the family. They, is, they are maintaining us. They are protecting us. Hmm? They are taking care of everything. And, and therefore, I am always depending on the Lord for his, for his mercy. Any activity, small of the smallest of the activity, a devotee should always say to himself that I am depending on the mercy of the Lord. I am hmm? depending on the mercy of my spiritual master. Hmm? So, with, when one has such genuine humility, when we develop this genuine humility, if we can in every, each and every activity of ours, if we see the presence of Lord's mercy, and we should, if we train our mind in that way, then we will become like that. Hmm? All these things will we have to train ourselves. Hmm? In every situation we have to train ourselves to depend on the mercy of the Lord. <coughs> so then, <coughs> was Krishna says, Sarva dharman paritta jama amekam sharanam raja hum tvam sarupape muksha shavi masucha. Hmm? So we have to surrender to him completely. Hmm? So these are the six symptoms of surrenderness which one has to develop. <clears throat> then Prahlad Maharaj is saying that <clears throat> most important thing hmm, hmm, surrender means one must accept the bona fide spiritual master. We discussed this yesterday. Hmm. Then what other things one, 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 one are associated with ex- accepting a spiritual master? Rendering service unto him with great devotion and faith. Hmm. And then Whatever one has in his possessions, one should not consider as ourselves, one should consider that this is the property of my spiritual master and Krishna. Spiritual master is not going to ask you, Rajendral Prabhu, come on, give all your property. Hmm? He is not going to ask you. But you should have that mood hmm? that everything belongs to my spiritual master and everything belongs to Krishna. Nothing is mine. Or even this body is not mine, we are discussing this body is not mine. Hmm? That is, body is also going to go. 
isn't it? This body is also going to go after a certain while. So if, if we think that these positions are ours, then we are in difficulty. But if we feel that we, when we know that all these positions we have to offer it to our spiritual master, then we are free from the anxiety, from the burden. <clears throat> and then in the association of saintly devotees, we should try to hear about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hmm? And we should always try to glorify the Lord and His devotees. <clears throat> and one should try to every day meditate on the lotus feet of the Lord. Actually, <clears throat> when one has deities in the house, it becomes this all things becomes very easy. Hmm? Because every, and every one should try every day hmm, to bathe the deities. To put them new clothes every day. Like we do to our kids. So what is wrong with the deities? Hmm? Deities, deities once in a year. Oh no, no, once in a week or once in a month. Hmm? Why like that? With all the troubles, we see that our kids go in proper dress to school. With all the troubles in the family, we see that our hmm, kids get proper food to eat. We see that they sleep, sleep properly. When they get up, then when they get up, then they go to, they take a bath. Hmm? I was staying with Gauran Trashtabha's house last two, three days. And I was seeing how Mataji was carefully saying that, go bhakti, go and uh, go for vadis and that. So this, so we should give same thing to Krishna also. Hmm? We should give same importance to Krishna also. Hmm? Yes, it is, it will be a little difficult, but it will be, it can be managed. So when we are engaged like that and we take care of Krishna like that, then we will gradually develop a relationship with the Lord. Because we give Krishna importance. We value his presence in our family. Hmm? That's why it is good to have one deities in the house. Hmm? So that then, then service is possible. Or if you have many deities, in action, then one day is one day you can serve one deity, second another deity, third day another deity. Hmm? You can do that. <coughs> there is one story, <coughs> one incident of Bhakti in the life of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. <coughs> Fakir Mohan Prabhu, he told me this incident privately. <coughs> he told that uh, he was glorifying his spiritual master, so that time he told this incident. <coughs> Fakir Mohan Prabhu has left this world, but he is a, he was a Gaudiya Vaishnava scholar. He was heavily respected by all the sannyasis in Iskon and Srila Prabhupada also. He met Srila Prabhupada also. Hmm? He was 80, 83 years old when he left his, left his body. <coughs> so, once Bhakti Siddhanta Sridhar Thakur is to get a complaint about a grahastha, grahastha couple hmm? and all these brahmacharis and everybody they used to complain that, that Gurudev why are you so much favorable to them? Huh? Why are you so much favorable? And all we are all, hmm? we are also doing a lot of services for you but you never appreciate our services. Why is that? And you, hmm? you love them so much. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarakur said that eh, time will come, I'll show you all what, what, how surrendered they are, this grass disciples to me. So, <clears throat> once uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarakur Thak he called this grass the couple and he said that I want in return, hmm, give all the properties in your name, you should put in my name. Put. Everything has to come in my name. Make the papers. And they made the papers. And they gave all the property to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Hmm? And then they said, <coughs> uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said to his wife, you come every day to me hmm? and you take your regularly what you want money for, ex give me ex what, how much money you want for every day, expense, re expense report and you take that much amount of money from me every day. Make it this an habit. They had no problem. They did that. Hmm? So af after a certain while, hmm, Bhakti Siddhanta Sathakura was very pleased and he told all of his disciples, look, this is surrenderness. Hmm? That he, that they gave their complete possessions to their spiritual master and they completely depend on his mercy. Hmm? So Bhakti Siddhanta Sathakura again called him, said that, I will transfer back all the property to your name. Take it back. So he gave, gave it back to them. Hmm? <coughs> So, <clears throat> to practice Bhakti Yoga, the first step is to accept a bona fide spiritual master. Actually, that is the beginning. Hmm? That is the beginning. It is not that it ends, spiritual life ends there. 
that begin it begins there hmm? it begins there and then <clears throat> the student or the disciple what should he do from a spiritual master he should be inquisitive he should try to know about the complete truth about sanatan dharma about eternal religion hmm? and then he should try to serve the spiritual master by there are two ways one is by physically serving him if one gets a fortune of physically serving a spiritual master then there nothing can be compared to it so if one gets a fortune to serve spiritual master what should he do then he should see that he should make bathing arrangement for him examples are given then there he should see that the clothes are properly washed and here they are ironed properly and then he should see that there is appropriate place for sleeping is clean it should the room should be clean and then uh, his when the disciple should cook for his make some eating arrangement for him nicely so this all things should be taken care and if the spiritual master or a certain sanyasi he comes to our home then this all things has to be taken care of nicely food clothing his sleeping place and everything has to be taken care of nicely <coughs> so this is called as guru shushushanam that the disciple should serve the spiritual master considering himself as a menial servant Das, <clears throat> and whatever he has in his positions, his in, his uh, intelligence, his wealth, his words, and everything has to be offered to the supreme personality of Godhead via the medium of spiritual master. Hmm? It's very very important hmm? that we offer everything to to Krishna. Hmm? <clears throat> at least in words we can offer. At least in words, at least we shall start with the words. Hmm? Offering everything to Krishna via the medium of spiritual master. Hmm? It is it is not that when when we when we know that a certain sadhu or a certain devotee needs something, hmm? and we are in a position to give, then we should give. We should help. Hmm? In Srimad Bhagavatam, <coughs> in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a the definition of dharma given. Hmm? What is dharma? As per Srimad Bhagavatam, the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is such a vast literature and so many incidences are there in Bhagavatam. But what is dharma according to Srimad Bhagavatam? Hmm? It says that <clears throat> when we see somebody hmm, in pain, hmm, then we should also feel that pain. Hmm? And when we see somebody in happy, somebody happy, then we should also feel that happiness. This is dharma. Hmm? As per Shrimad Bhagavatam. It might look a simple thing, but it is not that simple. Hmm? It is a big, it is the not easy to see when somebody is progressing, to see their progress and being happy is not easy. Hmm? And when somebody is in difficulty, and if we can help them, then we should help them. Hmm? Then, and <clears throat> If you are in a situ if you are if you are not in situation to help, then at least we should feel sad for him. This is dharma. Hmm? But generally it is otherwise. When we see somebody in distress, we feel very happy. Hmm? We get immense happiness in the heart. Wow. We get when we see people in distress, people crying, people in problem, we, we get some pleasure in our heart. This is crookedness. Hmm? And people will never advance in bhakti. Forget about prema bhakti. Hmm? And when, when somebody is happy, we should be feel, we should also feel happiness. Hmm? So this is what this is what dharma is as per Shrimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> so everything should be offered to the spiritual master as a matter of duty, but the offering has to be made to the spiritual master with love and not with artificially with a, uh, to show and get some material prestige. Hmm? This is also important. With what attitude are we offering to spiritual to everything to the Lord? It is also very important to show off. Hmm? Then that means it is material prestige. It is not with love. And when Krishna doesn't accept it, when it is not offered with love, so do you think spiritual master will accept it? <laughs> no way. Hmm? Duryodhana he wanted to when Krishna came as a peace messenger on behalf of Yudhishthira Maharaj to explain hmm, uh, and gave me something from Duryodhana. That time, Duryodhana wanted to offer him 56 kinds of offering to Krishna. So Krishna refused. He said, 
neither you are my well-wisher, neither you have some love for me. So, I, I cannot accept. I will only accept when somebody is offering me with love. Hmm? Patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayashati. Hmm? Yes, when, when somebody is offering things me, me with bhakti, then I accept it. But if it is not offered with devotion, whatever it is, I will never accept it. Hmm? So, <coughs> Vishnu Chakri Thakur is saying that <coughs> when you offer every, something to spiritual master, then it shall not be for material adoption, but shall be, it shall be offered with love. Hmm? Then Prahlad Maharaj is saying, now he is coming to her, <coughs> he is saying that Hari Sarvesh Bhuteshu Bhagavan Asta Ishvara Iti Bhutani Manasa Kama Iste Sadhu Manayet <coughs> One should always remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his localized representation as Paramatma. We should understand that he is there as Paramatma in everybody's, everybody's heart. And that is why one should try to offer all respects to all the living entities. Hmm. Now, Harihi Sarveshu Bhuteshu. Sometimes this sentence or this understanding that Hari is present in everywhere, is hard on every hearts of everybody is misinterpreted. Especially the Mayavadis, they said that since Hari is present in everybody, that means everybody is Hari. Hmm. So then they then there are so many ways why they address Narayana, Daridra Narayana, Swami Narayana, this Narayana, that Narayana, and they address people as Narayana Narayana. Huh? Hmm? You are also Narayana, Namo Narayana, Namo Narayana. Hmm? But <coughs> the one who is in knowledge, one who understands that hmm? Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu means Krishna is there as super soul in the heart of every living entity. Hmm? And also, hmm, the part and parcel of the soul of the super soul as Atma, Atma is also living entity is also there. And when we offer respects to one and all, we offer respects to the devotees. Hmm? Why? Because the, the presence of Supreme Lord Hari is there in the hearts of everyone. That's why we offer respects to him. Hmm? <clears throat> and especially in the life of devotees, the Lord's presence can be visibly seen also. Is there in the hearts of everybody. But especially we can visibly see them in the life of devotees. How? Because they have tilak, they are chanting, hmm? they, they are uh, always, they offer pranams to the Lord, hmm? they are always thinking of the Lord. So by this we understand, yes, the presence of the Lord is there. That's why we offer them respects. <coughs> <coughs> and by these activities, one is able to cut down the influence of the enemies, namely lust, greed, anger, illusion. And when, when one sees the presence of Lord in everybody, then one can get rid of all these enemies. Hmm? Lust, greed, anger, illusion, madness, jealousy. Hmm? And when thus situated, one can render service to the Lord. <clears throat> this is what Parallad Maharaj is talking about. Hmm? Now, <clears throat> Prahlad Maharaj is saying that what happens when one advances in Krishna consciousness? When we see some devotees, they are very advanced in Krishna consciousness and uh, liberated souls especially, when they hear about the Lord's pastimes, their hair stand on end, their hair stand on end, they start crying and all. So this is, <coughs> this is uh, natural for them because they are always absorbed in the thought of the Lord. So now, if, if this is not our situation, after spending so much years in Krishna consciousness, if our hair still doesn't stand on, and if we still cannot cry, hmm, then something is definitely wrong with us. Hmm. It is not that these are Sahaja people only will cry. It is not like that. Hmm. But, a cry, when we hear about the Lord's pastimes, how he helps, how he helped Draupadi, hmm, then we should be able to cry. In our heart, we should be able to lament uh, that when we'll uh, or when we see love of Prahlad Maharaj, when we we'll see love of Dhru Maharaj, how eagerness they had to attend the Supreme Lord. So when we see this all past tense of the Lord, then we should also develop that kind of a greed to have, have to become like that. Hmm? But our situation is that we 
forget about greed. Hmm? We don't have such greed also to become like them. Hmm? So we are in a very hmm, difficult situation. We are practicing Krishna consciousness, but it's going on. It's just going on. Take it easy. Take it easy. Life is going on, hmm? and no special effort has been made to become a advanced devotee, hmm? to become a liberated soul, to become a pure pure Vaishnava. We don't, and actually no special effort is required. Also, the only effort is required is desire in our heart. Hmm? And for that nothing is needed, only we should go and sit in front of the Lord every day while we are serving and we should pray to Lord, Oh Lord, please, I want to get out of this situation. Hmm? Please help me to become your pure devotee. Please help me. You are serving the Lord, taking care of duties, but we have always have some mundane thoughts. That devotee is doing like this, that devotee is doing like this, he is doing like that. All these thoughts should not come. Hmm? Our thoughts should be, oh Lord, please help me to develop pure unalloyed love for you. Please help me to uh, develop prema. Hmm? How, will, how will that prema come? Oh Lord, please give me association of your pure devotees. Hmm? So this, this, this has to be there. So that greed, when our, our prayers will get converted to, into a form of a greed. Hmm? So that prayers has to start. The first beginning is praying to the Lord to become a pure devotee. Hmm? Please make me pure another devotee of your lotus feet. I want to become like Prahlad. We cannot become like them, but at least we can follow them. Hmm? So when we start praying, praying every day, every day, please make me your Premi Bhakta, please make me Premi Bhakta, please keep me association always of your Premi, premi Bhaktas. Hmm? Prema Bhakti and Premi Bhakta. Hmm? These are two things which a devotee should always aspire for. If you see throughout the Bhagavatam, I mean all the prayers of all the Acharyas which they offer to the Supreme Lord, these two things are common. Hmm? Association of pure devotees, hmm? okay, first thing and second is hmm? uh, how that Prema Bhakti, desire to become a Parami Bhakta. So these two things are common in all the prayers. So we should also try and aspire to become like them. <coughs> Foolish and rascal people, you know, Srila Prabhupada is writing this, foolish and rascal people hmm, who are not on the transcendental position consider this uncommon activities of the Lord and His devotees as mythological fact, mythological. Hmm? Are we like them? Are we, 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 do we also think that these are mythological? Hmm? No, we have faith that all these are true facts. Then what is the problem with us? Why are we not, why, why are not we aspiring for it? Because we are not hearing about them regularly. Hmm? So we have to hear about, about uh, we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Hmm? We should read about it every day. Hmm? And then we should try to speak about it every day. So we should try to absorb ourselves in, in, in the service of Srimad Bhagavatam. And these great personalities, when they hear about the Lord's pastimes of Krishna lifting over the hill, and all these wonderful pastimes, their, their hair, they stand on their end and they, they are in ecstasy, they become like mad. Prahlad Maharaj says that <clears throat> just like a person when he is haunted by a ghost, he behaves very abnormally. Hmm? Similarly, a devotee, a, a devotee who has advanced hmm, and, has, and, and he has attained that position hmm, of, of a, of, uh, and he has become pure and right devotee of the Lord, he also sometimes behaves like and haunted man who, who is a person who is haunted by a ghost. Hmm? What, do, what does he do? He keeps on laughing. Hmm? Because he is always absorbed in thought of Krishna. So when he remembers some pastimes of the Lord and he laughs. Hmm? And when he, he remembers some pastimes and he starts crying. When he, he, when he remembers some pastimes, hmm? he, when he is so much absorbed that he said, Krishna, Krishna. He might, so, so he is so much absorbed in, in the thoughts of the Lord. In the, in the pastimes and other activities of the Lord that then in ecstasy all these things come out and they, they are completely detached from the material world. They are in, they are in their own world. Hmm? There is Krishna always meditating on the transcendental forms and activities of the Lord. So we should always, we should all aspire to become like them. Hmm? We should all aspire to become like them. <clears throat> so this is what Prahlad Maharaj is trying to instruct us. He is saying that <clears throat> a iron rod hmm, 
put into a fire becomes warmer and warmer and gradually it becomes like fire. Hmm? Similarly, when a devotee constantly engages in devotional service and thinks of the Lord in his in his original Krishna consciousness, he no longer has material he he attachment for material desires or he completely comes out from bodily concept of life. Hmm? So when we develop greed for getting Krishna Prem, when we develop greed for Sadhu Sangha, hmm, then on its own, gradually, gradually our prayers will become condensed and condensed and condensed and condensed and Krishna who is within the heart will help you. He will encourage you to, to read Bhagavatam more and more. He will help you. Hmm? Because he has to fulfill your desire, so he has to do something. So he will help you. Hmm? And then from outside, who will help you? The spiritual master or Krishna will send a uh, nice devotee who can help you develop Krishna Prem, Prema Bhakti. So in this way, when we, when we are developing this greed, then our so-called attachment for this material world will go away. Hmm? And only hankering for Krishna consciousness will remain. But if you are not hankering for Krishna consciousness, if you are not hankering to become Prema Bhaktas, then you will always hanker for something else. Hmm? So we as devotees, our prayers should be sincerely, well, 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 we are serving the Lord, it should be to become a pure, pure another devotee of the Lord. Hmm? And that's why it is very important to associate, to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrit, because the life of, lives of so many great devotees are present in those literatures. So when you come in contact with them, then we will develop a desire to become like them. Hmm? Thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. Any questions? This analogy, this analogy of um, uh, where in all those verses, Prabhupada explains that people, the Lord mm. in the fire, mm. it requires the quality of the fire. Yeah. So we could actually probably reflect on that and say that you know, as a Lord, we're not spending enough time. Mm. But the rod, mm. we're not spending enough time yeah. in the fire. Yeah. So I have a question uh, about something you said earlier in the lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if it is absolutely relevant, but I'm curious to know the answer. Okay. Uh, you describe that the soul enters the womb through the, uh, through the man, semen. Mm. But uh, which basically means somebody could have an, a sexual intercourse but not get pregnant. Yeah. But I have read again that in, in the Bhagavatam, I'm not sure to quote where, that the soul enters the womb at a much later stage when the child, like many months later. Uh, that is, again, I've also read that it uh, when it is a very great person, person coming, it usually enters at a later stage. Or I'm quite confused about, um, so if the soul isn't in the body that is developing, how does the, the heart that beats when they check? The soul is there. The soul is there. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, you see, the soul is there. Soul comes. That's why <clears throat> uh, it starts growing when uh, when there is a union between the male and a female. Then immediately, in some days, we come to know that she is pregnant. So how? Because the soul is there, and the there is some changes. Hmm? That means uh, because of the presence of soul, only the changes starts. The birth and this this is birth. So, if at the time of birth means there is a, that a body has to be there hmm? in the womb of the mother also, hmm? and so because the presence of soul is there, only then then it starts growing. Hmm? Correct. But why is it then they show in in Krishna story, for example? Uh, please forgive me if I say anything that causes any offense. So, uh, why does it say in the Krishna story that before? the baby was going to be, before the Lord is going to be born, he appears 
and then he goes into the womb of the mother who is pregnant. <laughs> yes. Lord's appearance is different. Correct. So that means appearance of someone very special is different. Yes. But otherwise, that is the standard procedure. Yes. The soul, the special souls when they come, yeah. they might go through the ordinary process. But they are not, they don't, the Lord creates an, such an environment in the womb that they are not affected by it. Because it is not a conditioned soul coming. If Lord's associate is coming, the Lord will make, make that womb of that mother so comfortable for that baby to stay there. Hmm. And also the baby will keep growing till... And yes, the yes. Can it has to go, it, it will go through a normal process only. Uh, but but will the womb will be a comfortable place. Okay, but the soul will not be in it. Soul will be in it. Soul will be in it. Yes, even the special soul is also there, but it, ha it we can't break the law. There is the we can't, the law of nature is that one has to. So that process is there. So one one will one will come to the same process, but for special souls, hmm, by the arrangement of the Lord. Actually, the special souls are always under the control of Yoga Maya. Hmm? So Yoga Maya makes a special arrangement for such souls who are coming in the womb. So for them, the womb is not an Hmm? Uh, terrible place, like for us. Hmm? Like Shukadeva Goswami, yeah. Shukadeva Goswami stayed for 16, 16 years. Hmm? So, and he was scared to come out. He was saying this is a comfortable place. But generally we see that womb is not a comfortable place. Shukadeva Goswami was saying this is the most comfortable place. Why? Because it, it was possible for, easily possible for him to remember God. And we, he was saying that if I come out, he was saying to his father, if I come out, then this Lord's external energy is so powerful that it, it, will, me, it will entangle me in so many activities and I might forget that. Hmm? So, Shukdev Goswami was saying, I am in a very comfortable position. Hmm? So then Vedavyas went and invited Lord Krishna to tell him that, please ask him to come out. So then he came out. Hmm? But for special souls, arrangement is special in the womb. But they have to go through the ordinary process. How to develop this grief for love for Krishna? Pray. 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 Every day. Every time we bow before the Lord, we should pray. And gradually this pray will become condensed and condensed and condensed and condensed and it will convert into a cry. And when it, when it is converted into a cry, then what will happen? Then Krishna is there in the heart as Paramatma, he is noting everything, our advancement. So when he sees that we are sincerely crying for it, for Krishna Prem, then he will make an arrangement. What arrangement will he make? He will send a suitable sadhu who can help us attain that that prema bhakti that platform of krishna prema so when there's sadhu krishna will send sadhu like dhru maharaj he sincerely wanted to attain the lotus feet of the lord hmm? even though that was for material thing but he sincerely had a desire to attain the supreme lord so krishna made an arrangement and said personality like narad muni so similarly we will also when we are sincerely hankering for Krishna Prem to become a Premi Bhakta, then Krishna will make arrangement at an appropriate stage we meet a Premi Bhakta. And who can give us training hmm, in, in advancing Krishna consciousness in that line. Hmm. But the process is there that we have to hear from them. When the sadhus come in our life, we have to hear from them and submit to them completely. Hmm. I was discussing yesterday with, with Bajendra Lal Prabhu the same point that sadhus can see through you yes. your conditioning hmm? but they won't help you unless you want help why will they help? Hmm? so when they know your conditioning and they will ask you how are you you will say fine Maharaj all, all is well hmm? but we know all is not well hmm? we are going we are having so much anarthas in our heart we are having so much obstacles in the path of Krishna consciousness. We have so much difficulty hmm, in being a devotee. We are so much conditioned. Hmm. So when we, if we are, simp if we are simply honest, hmm, 
And honestly, if we go and submit ourselves to such such sadhus, hmm, revealing our heart to them, revealing our bad habits to them, and we ask help from them, hmm, then such, then the sadhu seeing our sincerity will help us to overcome our conditioning. Will ha- they will help us remove the anarthas. Hmm. They will help us remove the hurdles in our hearts. Hmm. And then, when the path becomes easy by their mercy. Hmm. So we have to be very sincere and honest in practicing Krishna consciousness. Hmm. Everything starts with prayers. And then we will see a sadhu. And sadhu will come. Hmm. Krishna will send. Then we have to submit him ourselves to him. And then he allow him to rule our life. Train us. And then under his guidance practice Krishna consciousness and attain perfection in one life. In one life. Any other questions? So these and others in the world. Can you speak something? Andarthas. <clears throat> there are four kinds of anarthas basically. Mm-hmm. Various kinds of anarthas are there. I don't remember exactly all of them, <clears throat> but uh, weakness. Uh, one of them, I remember only one of them, is doubt in the f- in the uh, in the philosophy, hmm? having uh, not not having unflinching faith in the philosophy. This is also kind of anartha. There are four kinds of anarthas mentioned by Vishwanath Chakra Thakur elsewhere. <clears throat> one can read that somewhere. I don't know. I don't remember. But these anarthas are actually like an uh, obstacles on our path of Krishna, path to Krishna consciousness. And more and more anarthas uh, develop actually when we <clears throat> when we commit offenses, hmm, when we commit Vaishnava aprads, then that also <clears throat> then then to everything is destroyed only. Then to everything is destroyed. But otherwise also there are. Uh, so many uh, coverings, Anarthas can you also call as coverings? Hmm? And the sadhus, what they do, they they help us gradually by, by speaking Krishna Katha to us, they clear all our doubts hmm? and they help us develop our f- faith in the Lord. This six type of surrender, so they will sadhus will help us, they will train us how to become, how to, uh, how to develop this six type of surrender. Hmm? So, so this anarthas they don't allow us. We, it's like they block our way completely. Hmm? Or if if we have bad habits, then we won't be able to overcome them. <coughs> Any other questions? I'm sorry, but I have not, I have not, I have not read that subject matter. Yes. Yes, Mataji. Association of pure devotees. Mm. So, what is the quality of pure devotees? Like, core regulative principle and sextant grounds? Or no, no. Or, what is the quality of pure devotees? Pure devotees, they never forget Krishna even for a moment. Sri Radhika Madhava Yora Para Madhurya Lila Gunarupananam Pratikshana Svadana Lolupasya Vande Guru Sri Charanaranda. Hmm. So they are 24 hours remembering the Lord. Even for a moment they cannot forget Krishna. Hmm. This is one of the biggest sign, big biggest symptoms of a pure devotee. Nikunja Yuno Ratikila Siddha Yaya Libhir Yukti Rapekshnaya Pratikshana Swadana Lolipa Sevande Guru Sichana And they are always in the transcendental form, they are always absorbed in serving hmm, Srimati Radharani. Hmm. And <coughs> they see that they can, they, this pure devotees, they have relationship with the Lord. And only one who has relationship the, with the Lord can help a conditioned soul establish relationship with the Lord. If he himself doesn't have a relationship with the Lord, how will he help a conditioned soul establish a relationship with the Lord? Hmm. So, to see a pure devotee is not easy. The hmm. best way to see a pure devotee is to request the Lord to reveal who is your, who is his man. Because Krishna, 
Krishna's men are always here doing his business. What is their business? To help the conditioned soul at develop relationship with Krishna. So they are they are always there on this planet and they are doing Krishna's business. Hmm? So we have to pray sincerely to the lotus feet of the Lord. Krishna, please help me. We have to pray to Srila Prabhupada. Please help me. Hmm? In a, so that I can get association of such, such devotees. So they will, they will help you. They will give you vision. That's like <clears throat> Arjuna has to receive a vision to see uh, universal form of the Lord. Even though he was always with Krishna, but still he needed a vision to see the universal form of the Lord. Similarly, we also need a vision to see the pure devotees of the Lord. And that vision has to be given to us and Krishna will give that. Hmm? Then we can see them. Unless and until we cannot. We will see fault in everybody. Because of the conditioning nature, we will see fault even in pure devotees. We might not say it, but within our hearts, of the hearts, we will see faults in them. We won't have faith. So we have to pray to Krishna to reveal them. So when Krishna reveals, then we will develop faith. Please. Uh, Yes, but at least some, we have to begin somewhere. Yeah. Mm. When, like, like a devotee is, like my spiritual master, I give this example that initially when we have deities in our house, we might not have faith that the Lord is present in that. So we we get some guidance from senior devotees from the temple, and we follow a process that let us let us off. We have to offer every day to the Lord in a new plate, put tulsi. And this is the mantra we have to say. So we will, we will do, we follow that process. But initially we might not have the faith. But gradually, 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 every day by doing this, the Lord will see that He makes something in your life by which you develop some faith in the Lord. He will do something. And then you start, then your, when then you start, your service will be with love. With, and will un, with understanding that the Lord is present. Hmm? But yes, initially things will be mechanical. Mm -hmm. hmm? Hmm? But it's a bit like, uh, it doesn't matter if you're going to take an antibiotic, whether you know it or not, it's going to work in your body. So, I feel that if the doctor prescribes your medicine, you may not understand it, you may have no faith in the doctor, but if you're going to take it, you're going to, with mechanically, just take the medicine four times a day and call the doctor rotten. He is useless. 
but you're giving the medicine, you're going to have it, it's going to have its effect and you're going to get it. Yes. Hare Krishna. Jai Shri Prabhupada.